Hey guys, um, so now we have gone through the major rhythms. We're going to talk about some other possible minor abnormalities and start getting into um, some of the actual interpretation of rhythms, which I know you're so excited about. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about are what known as or what are what are known as PVCs. We're also going to talk about PACs too, but um, PVCs is something you're going to see tested over. Um, you're going to see them tested in many different sections, even outside of um, learning EKG. PVCs are something that are very common and can be okay, or they can be a sign of a problem. So PVCs stand for premature ventricular contractions. And just like the name suggests, um, it's effectively where the um, heart is contracting before the rest of the body is ready. So remember when I did that whole long talk about the toilet and how the heart's not supposed to be beating during the toilet. Well, what can happen with um, patients is, is that their heart can get impatient and it can start to beat early. The thing to know about these beats is one, they're usually beating during time. Like for example, um, like this one, it's happening right in the middle, like right in the middle of that toilet rest time. That heart is supposed to be resting right here, but, um, and I'm sorry, I don't know if you can see it like this one, the heart is supposed to be resting right now, but that beat is just happening right at the wrong time. Now, sometimes again, you irritate that T wave or that toilet and you can end up going into a abnormal rhythm. So sometimes for these PVCs, it can also be the start of an abnormal rhythm, um, so effectively one that can cause a problem because they can land at a time that it's not ideal for there to be a, um, you know, heartbeat squeeze contraction. But the other problem that we can have with PVCs is they can also happen, um, at times, um, they also with, sorry, when they do happen, uh, they're not actually a full contraction. So if you look at these, like you can always find a PVC, look at these, these are regular P wave, QRS, T wave. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. Ah, P wave, QRS, T wave, P wave, QRS, T wave. So you can see this, whereas look at this one, there's no P wave before it's a QRS and there's a T wave there. And same with this one, look, there's no P wave here. There's no P wave here. This is the T wave, there's no P wave here. So all they are is a QRS and a T wave. Um, and so it's not a full beat. It's not usually even a full heart squeeze. Um, so like when I watch these patients in the ICU and I have like an arterial line, I can see how well they're actually perfusing. And with these beats, a lot of times they're not even getting like push of cardiac output out. So they take up space. They come at these times that it's really not ideal. Um, they can lead to more serious things like VTAC and they're, they're not really doing anything to help. They're really just getting in the way. Um, but, um, that's why that that's really the big, so what with the PVCs is that they're taking up time that I could be having an actual heartbeat that's going to give me cardiac output. Um, and again, they can land in that toilet time and piss my heart off and then end up going into abnormal rhythm. Um, but keep in mind, most of the time when we're talking about PVCs, they are normal. Like if they're like this, just every now and again, you're probably have felt at least a few, um, you might not have felt them. You probably have had at least a few since watching this lecture, especially if you're staying up late and drinking caffeine. Um, but, um, uh, otherwise, like if it's just one occasionally, it's fine. But if there's more than three in a row, then we are getting into VTAC territory. So that's why, like, if I have a patient, like I'll, if I'm watching my monitor, I'll either see it. And usually the monitor will capture like an event, or if you're a, um, you know, monitor tech, a lot of times what you're watching for is you're counting how many beats of this. So if there's more than three of these in a row, we're like, okay, the patient had a run of VTAC. Um, like I said, it can lead to more serious things. You're going to notice it's a wide beat. So see how wide this is. Um, you know, if you look at how the length here, the, the width here um, for this beat, it's a lot wider. It doesn't look like the other QRSs. Um, that's how you usually tell that it is, that is what it is. Um, most of the time we just monitor this, especially if it's just now and again, like, you know, I had a patient the other day who had heart failure and, um, they just had a really irritable heart. And so they had what we I would call occasional PVCs. Like, you know, most of the time, if I looked up, you know, for 30 second period, I would see at least one PVC. Um, but sometimes these can be a sign of a problem. So like, for example, with this patient, I know that they were on Lasix. And so I wanted to check their potassium and their potassium was fine. But I also checked their magnesium too. I just talked to the doctor. I'm like, hey, they're having some frequent PVC or not frequent. I said occasional PVCs and um, they're on Lasix. Do you want to check some electrolytes? And so the doctor decided to, um, you know, to order those. 
um, the, the time we worry about these if they're frequent. So if you had on a nursing school exam where it says occasional PVCs, we usually don't worry about those. But if it says frequent PVCs, those are never okay. Um, and so after someone has a heart attack, sometimes they can have a little bit more ectopy than, um, you know, they might be having like little runs and stuff like that because their heart's waking up, but there's nowhere, um, at least in the med surge semester that I am familiar with, that it's okay to have frequent PVCs. Frequent is scary, dangerous, and we do not want it. So PVCs can come in different shapes and sizes. There's what's known up here as bigeminy, which means that every other beat is a PVC. So you can see here, if you're like, well, how do you know which ones are the PVCs and which ones aren't? They're the wide one. Look at this one, P wave, QRS, T wave. Um, this one, there's no P wave. It's a wide beat and a big old T wave. So look, P wave, QRS, T wave. I know this T wave is upside down. So you're probably like, I don't like it, but um, it's okay. Um, what you call, whereas like this is a very strange beat. So same he, over here, um, this is uh, what we would call um uh, we call it a multifocal PVCs where they're going in different directions. So just know they can go in different directions, but same thing. There's nothing preceding it. It's wide and bizarre. It has that big old T wave. This is what we call trigeminy, which means like every third beat. So think tri like um, like for three, every third beat. And this is what we call a couplet. So this is like a little couple, like holding hands um, of uh, PVCs. And so they are back to back. And um, uh, what do you call it? So those are different names. So you might see this, like you might see bigeminal PVCs or trigeminal PVCs or multifocal PVCs or couplet. Um, these are just some terms that you might see. Um, but the, all of these are PVCs. You can see they all look pretty similar where they're wide and bizarre. So if you're trying to pick them up on a strip. There's also what are known as PACs. And so, um, you know, the, the atria got a little jealous that the ventricles could happen prematurely. So sometimes the atria likes to prematurely contract too. So PVCs are early in the ventricles. And um, remember, there's no P wave, wide, wide QRS. That's what's um, you know typical of those. But PACs are an early atrial beat. Um, the, uh, what do you call it? Um, what's happening uh, with PACs? Um, there can be a P wave present um, and a normal width of the QRS um, usually. Um, and that's what's going to be a little bit different. So like, for example, here, um, but what's different is, is that pretty much you're having, oh, sorry, I'm trying to get my mouse up here. So down here, this is a PVC. See how it's wide, bizarre. There's no P wave and stuff for this is a PVC. It's happening in the middle of the toilet. Um, there's no P wave before. This is a PAC. So this was the normal beat. You can see here's two normal beats, but now I have a P wave and then I have a QRS. It's skinny and um, a T wave too. It's like, I almost had like a full, you know, extra beat. Um, but then it, it's not where it's supposed to be. It's during this toilet time. Um, and it looks different than what the other ones look like. Um, so that's how you're going to see a PAC. Now we're not going to give you here hey, tell the difference between a PAC and a PVC, but just know that you could have either or know that both of them just get in the way can cause problems. Um, we usually talk more about PVCs, but um, it is always possible that you might learn about PACs. So big picture here, PACs or PVCs. PVCs, they are ex premature beats that get in the way. We don't want them frequent or back to back. Um, they can be electrolyte abnormalities, things like that. And um, we just might want to look and make sure um, if there's anything that could be causing them, um, but they can be considered normal. As long as they're not frequent, they can be okay. We're just going to kind of monitor and um, watch and trend them um, and make sure the patient's not symptomatic with them. Because the other thing you have to consider if a patient has this and they have a really slow rhythm and then like every couple of beats is one of these, then we're going to be worried like, whoa, how much perfusion are they actually getting? But um, we always just kind of trend and watch and see um, how the patient's doing tolerating them and then report any frequency um, with these. If there's just one by itself, it will be just fine. Anyway, hope this helped. See you for the next one.